Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Today we're going to be building a uh, fairly new kit from uh, Dragon. And please forgive me as I try to butcher this really, really long word. This is the uh, Vulcan Ketten Alfklauer 38. Uh, now I probably mis mispronounced it and I'm sure a bunch of you will tell me later on in the comments down below. But this is basically a Hetzer chassis with the, uh, the top opened up and a uh, short 75 millimeter uh, gun mounted inside of it. So uh, you will see some of the interior detail. It looks like it's a, a pretty, uh, pretty nice little kit. Uh, it's very small on the part count, which is nice from Dragon. It's only about 240 parts. Uh, and we can do a late war uh, camouflage pattern on it as well. So looks to, uh, looks to be uh, a fun little build. So let's get started on it. What I thought I would do for you too before we start the construction is kind of give you a breakdown of the parts. I know a lot of people like to see the parts before they're assembled. Now uh, this this sprue right here is off their older Hetzer sprue, which basically all you're going to be using out of this is just a lower chassis. So it really doesn't matter, you know, how new or how old, because the quality is going to be fine for this part. This is a bathtub style hull, like we've talked about in the past. So the sides are already onto it as well as the back. Now they've also included a bunch of new parts as well as some some other parts from other kits. This is kind of like made up of like four different kits to kind of come up with it. This is all obviously all new right here with these parts. And then you get length and link tracks, which is appreciated, especially on some of these smaller tracks. Putting these together can sometimes be a pain. And if it's gonna be up underneath the side skirt anyway, eh, that's fine by me to have one big long length for it. So get two sprues for that. Then for the uh, part of the gun assembly, it's off the, uh, the 234 kit. So you'll be using some of these parts right here. But one thing they've gone ahead and done is they've given you the much better 75, that's the uh, slide molded 75, off of their Panzer IV kit. So you use some of the parts on this as well. And the interior is off of the uh, the 38T kit that they came out with. So this was actually molded very, very beautifully and, and really liked it when it first came out. So for the parts that you will see, are those are going to be very, very nice inside. And then you've got a couple other little odd Hetzer parts, some of the mufflers. The, uh, the wheel assemblies are all very nicely molded. And you get two of those. So that's basically it. And then plus they've also given you uh, clear periscopes as well. And then of course they give you a little bit of a photo etch for the uh, the muffler guard and some, some basic uh, decals, which based on the time that this vehicle would have been made, there wouldn't have been a lot of other markings on it the way they had camouflaged them. So now that you've seen the, uh, the parts, uh, let's start the construction. Now as you see right here, that was one of the suspension arms that I've pre-assembled. Uh, there are no little marks on the uh, suspension arms to tell, so the, the best thing you can probably do is try to get them as level as possible, as you can see here. And that way all the wheels are going to lay perfectly flat on the ground. Now you could use this to your benefit too, that if you wanted the uh, suspension arm to be up, if you were going to model something like going over bumps or anything like that, that would work. But for our purposes, we're just going to make it flat. Now at this point you have to attach the leaf springs and there's a very very small connection point for the leaf springs to stick on so I put a little extra glue in the middle of this unit and you can just make the bottom of the leaf springs touch in there too and that'll give it a little bit more uh, stiffness so it doesn't want to pop off. Now the little spacer right here is necessary, don't forget about that. Uh, to put the drive sprocket on you need to attach this little spacer first. And once you put that on into place, it should just click right in. And you can see right here on the top, there it goes. And what you want to do is probably put a little extra glue on there as well to keep it from, from popping off later. And finally, we're just going to attach all of the, uh, the lower suspension arms here and glue those into place. I'm not going to attach the wheels yet. 
we're just going to put them in temporarily and this is just so when we lay it flat we can make sure that all of the wheels touch evenly on the bottom that we have a nice even set of wheels that way it doesn't look like one's rising off the ground Now as I attach this back plate, uh, there is a slight little uh, seam that we're going to have to fill later on. Uh, I'm going to wait until later after we get the, uh, the rest of the pieces in the click into place and see if it gets any better. Uh, but if not, we'll put a little bit of the uh, Vallejo white putty underneath and that'll seal in any of that area. So what I've done now is I've assembled a few of the internal pieces and this is the uh, transmission that now although it's mostly going to be kind of invisible once you put the the top on it you still will be able to look down a little bit and see it so I decided to go ahead and build it. Now for the uh, the firewall for the motor or the engine there is no marks on the side of the hull to, to tell where it's actually supposed to fit in. So. We're going to fit the front uh, transmission as tight as we can, glue that into place, and then using the drive shaft here as a guide, because it's supposed to mate up exactly with it, that's where we will glue the firewall into place. And then we also have the, the chairs and the gun racks as well that we'll put, glue all that in. So what I'll do now is I'm going to glue all that stuff into place and I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I've attached the, uh, the firewall in the back and actually attached it a little too far forward. Uh, it wasn't until I went to dry fit the uh, the top on here and noticed that there's some some marks in here that will correspond to the other half for the firewall. So I made the uh, necessary adjustment and moved it back. And after dry fitting that, this just kind of clicks into place right here and gets a nice firm fit. So keep that in mind that you do have to match it up to the top of this plate going forward. Now I've also gone ahead and started cleaning up. These are all the parts that make up the uh, the gun assembly on here and I've begun sanding those. Uh, what I'll probably do is just put all these together, uh, show you what the gun looks like. This gun has been used in quite a few uh, few of their other models and it's just their short 75. It got, like I said, a little more cleaning up to do so I'll clean these all up, put it together and show you how it looks. So we've got the uh, the gun assembly completed and now we can begin to work on the uh, the upper part of the hull and all the little pieces that go on there. And I've started attaching also the front pieces on here as well. The and once we attach the lower or, or the back half of the vehicle, go ahead and fit this in. Right in through there. Now what I'll do is I'll let this dry for a little while, then we're going to attach it to the to the lower part of the hull and then I can start attaching all the other little pieces on there. That way we know exactly how everything's going to line up. Well, here we are. I'm just putting some of the last little pieces on the uh, top part of the vehicle getting this muffler glued into place here and as you can see I've attached all the other boxes things like that all over the top here the other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach the uh, return idler on the back but the way to do this is because there's no real marks to let you know exactly where it's going to go so the best way I can do this is by putting on one of these temporarily and then we can line this wheel up so it just breaks past the rubber right here. So that's the position we want to glue it into. So I put a little glue on the uh, the idler wheel. Now the uh, the road wheels are still able to be removed. So now that once you've got it in the right position that you want to go at. The next thing while that's setting up is I'm going to show you is the uh, the tracks. Now the tracks uh, are 
are length and length, so half little tiny pieces and some of the bigger pieces. What I've done is I've kind of glued these together into the general shape that they're going to be and left one um, part of it open so we'll be able to fit these around. I'll be able to actually paint and weather and do everything I want on these separately. Then we'll be able to just pop them around put the last little bit of glue into place there. They go together very easily. Um, I got a little touch of cleanup I have to do on them here and there, but uh, very easy to go together. There's only a couple little individual links here and here and some on the edge pieces. So once the, uh, the, the wheel dries, we have all this painted. I just put these into place temporarily just to show you that if you do this with the tracks, you'll be able to easily just pop them around, get them to fit in, and they still have enough play that you'll be able to get them to fit properly. And then once we get all that, like I said, painted and put on, that actually will go inside there. And it's a very easy way to put the tracks on and paint them without having to try to paint all around that other part. So, and they're easy to come off as well. So here we are. We've uh, completed uh, primary construction on the vehicle. Uh, the tools are left off right now, as well as you can see the wheels, the tracks, and the side skirts, which I've got all cut up and cleaned up, and we've got them attached to our board here so we can do our painting. And these, like the side screens, we'll put on separately after we're all done with it, as well as the tracks, too, as I showed you earlier. Um, all in all, the, uh, the kit goes together actually pretty well. There's no fit issues other than just the slightest little bit I was talking about earlier right back here and a little filler took care of it right away so it was just a minor minor thing so uh, now we're gonna go ahead and start the painting process and we're gonna start by painting it with our uh, shadow and highlight coat the first coat we'll put on will be the uh, the NATO black followed by a white coat of all the highlighted panels Okay, as you can see right here, I finished up the uh, the highlight coat over the uh, the shadow coat, and this will really be evident once we uh, go ahead and spray the actual base color. I also did that on all the wheels as as well as the side skirts. Now I painted the uh, the tracks the NATO black as well. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use, as you probably have seen me before, this is our, my track color that I use as a, as a light mist coat. And this is a mixture of 75% NATO brown, 25% NATO black, and 5% just flat red. And it it's kind of just turns out to be like a kind of a darkish brown. And we're just going to lightly mist this color over all of the, the black we've already done. And hopefully you can kind of see that it starts to give it just kind of a tarnished look. Not really a rusted look, but a nice tarnished base for the, uh, for the weathering that we're about to do over it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish those up and we'll come back and show you what they look like. Okay, we've got all the, uh, the parts ready to paint. And to do the road wheels, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and use a uh, circle template to line up on top of there. Just so we can leave all of the rubber still intact. Now I've mixed up a bottle of 50% XF57 and 50% XF60 to kind of give it more of a late war Panzer yellow, uh, dark yellow. It looks it's a lighter version of it right there, and it comes out pretty good that way, especially after we're going to put on all of the uh, the weathering over it. And now we're also going to spray the entire body. And because this is an open top vehicle, I'm going to spray the interior the same color as the outer uh, base color would have been and you'll hopefully be able to see the tone variation. Next what I'm going to show you is uh, beating up some of the side panels. Now this one is a, a completed piece that I've already beat up and weathered and with some scratches and a little bit of rust, a little streaking grime. And this is the one that we're going to show you from scratch how to do that. Now the, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that same dark brown chipping color for the tracks and actually use it as a chipping. 
and just using a real fine brush making sure there's not much paint on it just start putting some small chips and cracks into it or not cracks uh, chips and scratches I should say and kind of just go everywhere you think there might be chips and getting the the long scratches like I had in that one you kind of have to just do some of these kind of scratches where something is hard and then soft and And there's really no wrong way to uh, to scratch these up. Now I should also point out too, I have sealed these with uh, Tamiya's clear coat, so any of the weathering and stuff we do on it won't damage the paint underneath. And we'll let that dry for a little while and come back to the next step. Now that that's dried a little bit, we're taking the same dark yellow color now, and we're going to put a few little little rubs scratches and the rubs are where it it discolored the paint a little bit but didn't go all the way through except for on the green here it may have put some little chipped areas and then once I put this color on we're gonna go back over it with the uh, the darker color and kind of fill that in a little bit Okay, now that the uh, the paint is dried, I'm just putting a little coat of enamel thinner on here, and then using some enamel light rust, we're going to kind of put up some few areas from the scratches that rust would start to accumulate, and you can put it on fairly heavy. It's And then once that has been put on, taking your same brush that you applied the uh, thinner on, now just slowly start to drag it through just to keep create some streaks. And we're also going to do the same. We're going to put a little, little grimy brown color on there as well. And you just got to go back and forth blending it and blending it and getting it to the point you like. And I'm going to probably put a little bit more rust on it to match this one right here. And we're also going to do the same thing with the wheels as well. Now I'm also going to do some chipping on the, the paint here as well. We're not going to go as heavy as chipping as like in some of the side skirts. And a little bit around the weld seams here, too. Now, I'm going to go over the whole vehicle and do some minor, minor scratching on all of these little areas. And we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm about to do the exact same thing to the body. I finished up all the little chips and scratches, and I've put a little layer of uh, uh, odorless mineral, mineral spirits on it. And we're just going to do a little bit of weathering. Put the, uh, the different colors of the grime. And then a little bit of the, uh, the rust color. And, and it's alright if you put it on heavy like I was telling you earlier. Because most of it's going to come off when we do the streaking. And you can even use a little bit of Tamiya's panel liner. And then just start taking the brush and And 
And then you can even take a cotton swab and just do a few little strokes across it too. And that'll give you some cleaner than normal areas to kind of blend in. And once it dries, you'll, you'll start to see the streaks because they won't be uh, so shiny anymore. It'll be a much more flat surface. In fact, pull that out of the way and show you all of the wheels and side skirts are all done now. And I think they've come out pretty nicely. We've got some nice amount of dirt and grime built up on it, as well as some nice streaks on the, uh, the side skirts. So what I'll do is I'm going to finish up the rest of the body on there, uh, get it all ready to go, and then we're going to put these pieces on, and then I'll show you the tracks next, and then kind of put it all together. Okay, for the tracks, we're going to use just a little bit of Tamiya's panel liner as a fixing agent. And it's an enamel. And I'm just going to show you a little bit of the area right here. And then we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo's pigment. And I happen to be using Light Sienna. And we're just going to kind of start to blot it in. Kind of push it into all the little cracks and crevices on here. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of show you this over here. This is uh, what it looks like once it dries up. And I'm about to go over it here using a pencil. I want to darken up the, uh, the plate, the tread plate, the part that's sticking out. And it's, it'll give it a little bit of a metallic effect, but not too much. And you can even put a few more washes on it, things like that, to change the color around a little bit. But I'll kind of work on that stuff for a little while and show you what it looks like just before we put it on. Now you'll also notice too, I did do a little weathering inside behind the wheel areas just in case any of it is noticeable. And now we're just going to use a little super glue to start attaching all the road wheels. And we do want to check on them to making sure that they are staying nice and straight so when we do put the tracks on that we'll get a nice even surface on it. So I'm going to put those on and I'm going to fit the tracks on and show you what it looks like. So here we are, here is our completed model. The last couple of steps I did was, I obviously I once I put the tracks and the side skirts on, I kind of blended a little bit more of the, uh, the pigments and powders on it. Uh, and then afterward, after everything was said and done, I went and buff coated the entire thing like I usually do. Uh, we did put a little bit of rust effect on the, the muffler around the tailpipes and just kind of did a little bit more streaking all over just to kind of blend it together. Now it didn't have clear lenses in the uh, the kit so we just painted it silver and I put a little black wash on it to kind of dull it down a little bit. And It would have been probably a little better if it would have had the clear lens on it but it's good enough for now. I did do a little weathering and stuff inside but it's real hard to, to see the inside of the vehicle and we did a little bit of our metal burnishing effect on the, the gun breech. And finally I threw some folded up like uh, mesh netting for the back here. So all in all, the kit was a uh, very easy kit to put together and actually had a, quite a bit of fun putting this one together. I like the camouflage job. It's something a little bit different than what I've normally done and really beat it up a little bit more than we probably would have normally have. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have more videos coming. Thank you.